Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, August 18th, 2022. Uh, just a reminder, a recording device will be used during the, uh, during the uh, duration of this meeting. Public comment for, I'm gonna open up with public comment for agenda items and rules for conduct of public meetings established by resolution 2001 The time allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes unless otherwise set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for the public comment for agenda items. Seeing none, we're gonna move on to the- uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just uh, wanna clarify, there are members in the audience who are here for agenda items. Correct. Uh, Correct. Okay, at the, at, the, at the point in the agenda that they will be recognized then? Yes, sir. Very good, thank you. And we're going to open up to meet, uh, the minutes of the previous meeting for the Board of Supervisors, August 4th, 2022 a.m. session. Do I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion to approve the board minutes of August 4th um, a.m. work session. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, we've already gotten the approval. Uh, we've already gotten the... Um, the financials, so do I have an authorization to pay the bills and approve payroll? I'll make a motion to be authorized to pay the bills and approve the payroll. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Township Manager's Report. I'll turn it over to Luke. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening. I have a long list of things to talk about, and I'll try to keep each All right, individual next is subject. The building inspector. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, the rest of that sentence would have been, "I will keep each section short." But there's a number of things I'd like to touch on. Uh, first up, a reminder: we are in our public comment period for our draft comprehensive plan. Uh, a current draft of the comprehensive plan is available online. It is at ebrandywine.org forward slash comp plan. On that same website, you can watch the video presentation of that from our consultant team. And that same website hosts a form to provide public comment on the draft. Uh, the project was funded in part by a generous vision partnership program grant awarded to the township from Chester County. Uh, I wanna to touch briefly on the status of Glory Maple Lane. Uh, township staff have received some resident inquiries about the status of this road, which is located in the Maple View development. The section of roadway connects the signal at 322 and Bollinger to the North Guthriesville Road. While this road segment is now paved, this private road is closed at North Guthriesville Road. The land development plan envisions this road will eventually be offered for dedication and open to through traffic. The decision to keep the road closed at this time was informed by safety concerns, namely construction continues in phase three of Maple View, and the fact that planned traffic calming features on this road are not yet installed. I have a brief update on uh, township staffing. Um, township staff and board members for the East Brandywine Municipal Authority have recently conducted interviews for the open part-time position of Municipal Authority Secretary. Two additional interviews are scheduled for Tuesday, August 23rd. This board may expect a recommendation for a conditional offer of employment as soon as you're um, a regular session. The full-time public works vacancy has been advertised with a closing date of August 26th. Interviews will be conducted beginning on the week of August 29th. Both both paid and volunteer opportunities at East Brandywine Township can be found on our website at ebrandywine.org forward slash jobs. The 2023 Budget Committee met for the first time this morning. Uh, they solidified directions for our community partners, township committees, and township department heads to submit budget requests for their review. Also agreed was a future schedule of meetings. These will be advertised. All meetings will be at 9 a.m. here at the township building. The meetings will be September 8th, September 21st, October 5th, October 20th, and November 10th. This board may expect a presentation of a draft budget and to be solicited for feedback on that draft budget at your regular a.m. meeting on November 3rd. An update on the multi-municipal process and marketing service for recyclable materials. On August 17th, the Chester County uh, Commissioners awarded a contract for the process and marketing um, uh, agreement to J.P. Mascaro and Sons. 
uh, township recyclable materials that is collected at curbside will continue to be conveyed by our waste hauler, A.J. Blazinski, to the total recycle material recovery facility located in Birdsboro. The board had previously authorized me to execute a memo of a commitment memo on August 4th. On the subject of the solid waste program, township staff has completed the DEP section 904 performance grant for materials collected in 2021. Reported were 194 tons of commercial material and 1,033 tons of residential material. The base award is anticipated to be $6,141. The additional bonus award mounts will likely be lower than in prior years due to the substitution of 2020 census figures for what we had been using as uh, 2010 census. In other words, our population, we, uh, the, the bonus is calculated on a certain amount of tons per person, and for a decade we've been growing and not adjusting the census figure. And now we've adjusted the census figure, and so it, we're going to take a hit. It's going to look like we're collecting less recyclables per end of it per capita. I have a project update on the Bondsville Mill Soils delivery. The delivery of amended soils as part of phase two of the Bondsville Mill Garden project began on August 5th and continues into this week. The board approved the purchase of 2,000 cubic yards of material from the CoStar vendors uh, Laurel Soils on July 7th. Uh, my thanks to the many volunteers uh, for their work in getting this project complete. Uh, another project update, um, our, the team at Honeywell has completed their healthy building assessment and is preparing an itemized quote um, for their recommended improvements. Bill McShane of Honeywell will make a presentation to this body at your meeting on September 1st. So there'll be an update there. Uh, another project we have going on, and that's the bathroom in phase one of the community park. Um, the last action taken by this board was to reject all the bids, which came in unexpectedly high, for site work at your meeting on July 21st. The steering committee met yesterday and uh, talked about the future of this project. Um, there's a couple bits of good news. Uh, one is that the, the grant we received from DCNR um, can be extended from its current deadline of October 22nd, or December 2022 to December 2023. Uh, DCNR has also offered to increase the total award in light of these unexpected higher dollar expenses. The township will be expected to match this funding dollar for dollar. Uh, DCNR will also allow the township to withdraw the application altogether, and the failure to complete the project will not be held against the township in future grant cycles. The steering committee is also considering a couple um, uh, opportunities to, to value engineer the plan to reduce the total overall cost. Um, one is considering other cooperative purchasing agreements besides CoStars. The other is considering smaller prefabricated structures. And the final approach is uh, considering revising the site work bid package and reducing the scope of work for the site work. And lastly, thank you for your patience, the upcoming events before we meet again on, October, uh, on August 19th, tomorrow night, there'll be a free movie in the park uh, featuring Rhea and the Last Dragon. And on September 10th at 9 a.m., there will be the dedication of the Jim Croce Historical Marker. I'd like to uh, uh, just mention that pre-registration for that event is required because space is limited. Uh, please visit the township website to get a ticket to participate if you are so interested. Uh, respectfully submitted, township manager. Thank you again. Thank you. Do you want to bounce into building inspectors? Sure. So uh, the, the building inspectors report for July 2022, a total uh, number of building permits issued were 30. Uh, zoning permits issued were four. Fees for all building and zoning permits totaled $12,397.50. Um, uh, use and occupancy permits issued for new units and new additions uh, was 19. Uh, 174 inspections were completed, and there were 140 failed inspections. Uh, total fee collected were $23,620.50. Thank you. And uh, Township Roadmaster is not here, so we'll bounce into the East Brandywine Police Department report. Good evening. July 2022, East Brandywine Township Police completed 2,126 incidents. These incidents included 198 investigations, which resulted in 12 criminal arrests, 12 summary arrests, 
four warrant arrests and one juvenile allegation. Officers also conducted three vehicle accident investigations during this time. In addition to these activities, these Brandywine officers performed traffic enforcement, resulting in 134 traffic citations and 50 written warnings. Officers also logged a total of 9,367 patrol miles for the month of July. Finally, I would like to report that Corporal Juan Lemus successfully completed Penn State's supervisory police training program. That will conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you, and then we'll go to the fire company reports. Good evening. East Brandywine Fire Company monthly report for July of 2022. The fire company responded to a total of 53 incidents. 31 of those incidents were fire related, 22 were medical related. Uh, incidents by municipality for East Brandywine Township, we responded to 13 fire incidents, 12 medical incidents, and in West Brandywine Township, eight fire incidents, uh, 10 medical incidents. We provided mutual aid to Cowan Township, South Coatesville Borough, Wallace Township, West Bradford Township, West Vincent Township, and West Whiteland Township. Uh, average personnel per response was 11, and for major incident types, we had a average response of 15 personnel. Our fuel usage for the month was 170 gallons, of which attributed to East Brandywine Township was 60 gallons. There was an estimated fire damage of $1,000. We held three trainings with a number of personnel attending each training, an average of 22. That concludes the fire company's report. Thank you very much. All right, uh, new business. I see we have some guests here, so we're gonna start with the Downingtown Library donation allocation. Good evening. Uh, you know, yeah, please, just because uh, the microphone's up there and I won't hear you. Thank you. Appreciate you having us here this evening and, and appreciate the help you've given us in the past. I'm Jack Hines. I'm president of the library. And as a way of introduction, I'm also a fellow supervisor in West Bradford Township. So I've been, been around a little while. So uh, I have here with me tonight is uh, Lawrence Smythe, who is our new director of the library, and also Debbie Shook, who is a member of our uh, board of trustees and also a resident of East Brandywine Township. Just want to mention that uh, the use of libraries is very important to our communities, and, and Lauren will give you a lot of information about that. And I don't want to steal her thunder, but I'd like to tell you that uh, the Downingtown Library has more programs and serves more people with a smaller budget and less staff than a many other libraries. So it's, it, we're very proud of what we do. We have a very active board. Uh, we raise a, a lot of money, but we need, in order to maintain a sustained budget, we need help from the municipalities, and we're asking each municipality to give us at least $3 per capita uh, towards funding the library on an annual basis so that we can continue to provide the services that Lauren will uh, explain to you. So I'll jump off and let Lauren do the real work because she knows better than I. Thank so, you very thank much. You, Lauren. Thank you, Jack. Good evening. Thank you for adding me to your agenda this evening. As Jack said, my name's Lauren Smythe, and I'm the director of the Downingtown Library, having started in April 2022, so late April. So I'm just about four months. I came to Downingtown with more than 14 years of experience in public libraries, with the majority of that experience in neighboring Montgomery County, so I am of the greater Philadelphia region. I'm very happy to join a dedicated staff and board. First and foremost, I want to thank the Township Supervisors and the East Brandywine staff for your continued support and generosity over the years. You're an important partner to the library, I've learned that already, and we want to be just as strong as a partner to you as well, so please never hesitate to reach out so that we can help you serve the residents of East Brandywine Township. We're just wrapping up our summer reading, which is my main update for you today. Summer is the very busiest time at public libraries across the nation. And uh, Downingtown Library is experiencing one of the busiest summer reading programs I've seen in my career in libraries, particularly for a library of our size. More than 1,400 people signed up for the summer reading program to date of all ages. We've had 50 teen volunteers assisting uh, with the program, helping to sign up children and adults and other teens. We had 525 people show up to our June 10th summer reading kickoff with more than 1,100 people entering the library that day 
from our door counters. Believe me when I say, especially I was about six weeks in and helping out the front desk and still learning that system, that it was a very busy, um, in the best way, day, but very, very busy. So we're literally buzzing with activity and we look forward to continuing to welcome patrons back this fall as we transition back to full services, as we keep inching closer and closer to pre-pandemic levels of service. We're hoping that you'll continue to support us and to sustain the library. Our current goal, as Jack mentioned, is to get each of our supporting municipalities to a contribution rate of $3 per capita. Once we've achieved that goal, over time, we hope to incrementally and over time work towards the next sustainable funding goal, which would be $5 per capita, which really makes a difference in library services and communities. And that's a statewide funding goal um, that's even included in you know, measures of how to receive the best aid for libraries from the state. Downeytown Library is on the cusp of tremendous growth, as I'm sure you're all aware um, with this area in general. To work to manage this growth, we hope to earmark funds in our 2023 budget to get our staff salaries to a minimum of $12 an hour. We have quite a number of staff who are under $12 an hour at this point, some who are under $11 an hour. Um, and to also make commensurate small cost of living adjustments to the other staff as well. By fairly compensating and retaining our staff, we'll be able to continue to offer high quality services while planning and meeting this continual increase in demand and restoring our services from before the pandemic. We know that East Brandywine Township residents uh, support the library along with the township. More than 2,838 residents currently have a Chester County Library System card, and that is just card holders. Sometimes in a family, I know in my family, my daughter and husband, they don't have cards at the moment since we just moved, but they'll be getting cards, but I have a card. So some families, everyone does, sometimes it's just one person. So that's not indicative of you know total usage, that's just card holders. In 2022, East Brandywine residents checked out more than 31,000 items, and in 2021, they checked out or borrowed, I should say, more than 42,000 items. In the past five years, we've seen our total library cards at Downingtown Library, so all of our library cards grow by 39%, which is quite a lot. And as of right now today, we're just under 9,700 library card holders for Downingtown Library alone, which is quite a lot considering we serve 44,000 people. Our programming and circulation numbers also continue to grow, and this is all this growth is in spite of the pandemic. I invite you all to stop by the library. You'll see the community engaging with the library and enjoying also our shared public spaces, our community rooms. Um, you know, we have a lot of families that come just to hang out, play with the early literacy and learning toys and check out books together and attend story times and all sorts of programs. For your further consideration, you'll be receiving a letter in coming weeks from me and from Jack Hines, our board president, detailing our request for support in 2023. I appreciate Jack attending this evening, along with trustee and East Brandywine resident, Debbie Shubb. I've left copies of our 2021 annual report, which as we creep closer to 2023 is less relevant, but still interesting. I've left copies of that along with my business card um, in the back of the room and please feel free to reach out to me at any time. Thank you again for your time today, and I look forward to working with you to serve our shared community. And if I can answer any questions, I'm happy to do so. I was just gonna point out two things. One, well, one a question, but the second to point out to you that as you just heard today, the budget committee just started meeting, so there's perfect timing. This but, is great that you guys are on the ball with this. Um, my question for personal knowledge, I guess, it would be nothing other than that. I'm just curious, are, are the uh, people that are checking out the books, are, are, is it more child related or, or older adults? Just out of curiosity, where we're going with our school system is why I'm asking this. Yeah, that's a great question. So we, we see a lot of for all ages. I could certainly, I don't have an exact breakdown of that tonight. I could get some more information to you, but we really see lots of families, lots of adults uh, across the board, very busy library. Yeah, okay. all ages. Yeah, I was just hoping that we could get the kids more interested and that's why I was asking. Yes, that. yeah. I mean, our, our <laughs> summer reading, the amount of children and families, especially early literacy, just kids in the children's area, I've been so impressed with what I've seen, what the staff has built up. 
um, just walking through. And what I've heard from other libraries that some of their level of engagement is still not quite back from the pandemic, but doesn't seem to be a problem in Downingtown. We've got so many um, young young families and children there every day. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? I, I do, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your presentation. My, my question has to do with the contributions made by other municipalities. Absolutely. Um, I guess it's it's twofold. Um, how many municipalities in the, in your service area are making the contribution that that you're asking for of of three dollars per capita, and then do you twenty census data? Yes. Yeah. So as of right now, as of today, West Bradford is the only municipality that supports the library that hits the three dollar mark. We all we are asking all of our um, municipalities to try to get to that. Everyone's at different different levels. Um, some are closer as well. So um, you know, some support split municipalities. We right now serve Downingtown Borough, Cowan Township. 50% technically of Cowan because we share them officially um, with Coatesville Library. East Brandywine, 100%. West Bradford, who also does contribute, even though Coatesville is not their service area, they recognize that they use the library, so they also contribute to them. Uh, Euclid, which is not considered officially part of our service area, but again, they recognize people use Downingtown. So they also give us a portion. And then East Count is 100% ours. So we have quite a few municipalities. And uh, the range is probably from, it looks like, I have these numbers right in front of me. We're at about a dollar per capita to over, over $3 is the range. So most are around, um, which is where East Brandywine is, is within that $2 range right now. And um, I believe that, you know, we are asking people based on the, the 2020 census numbers, if that answers the other part of the question. Very good. My recollection is that we were doing $2 per capita based on 2010 census. So there's two variables that, that yes. will change with this request. So yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Luke for some resignations and some appointments. Um, yeah, well, this is <laughs> I, I always kind of feel unusual to make these presentations as I, I start with. I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry to announce, and then I move on to, well, I'm very pleased to announce. And, and that's what's happening with um, um, our agenda items 6B and 6C. Um, um, uh, Sandy Mosier is a is a is a founding member of the East Brandywine Township Municipal Authority, and she has decided to step back. Um, she's made an announcement of her intent to step back as early as uh, in January of this year, and and graciously decided to stay on until we could locate a uh, a replacement. And uh, this evening, we we um, um, the municipal authority is is pleased to uh, ask the the board of supervisors to consider appointing that uh, replacement. The gentleman's name is Mike Wade. His application packet is included in your packet. Um, so at this time, I would respectfully ask the board to accept the resignation of uh, Sandra Mosier from the municipal authority and to simultaneously appoint. Uh, 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 Mike Wade to fill the unexpected term, uh, the unexpired term. Okay, um, so do I have a motion? Um, I guess we'll make the motion to um, to accept the resignation of Sandra Mosier uh, and accept the appointment of Mike Wade. Do I have a uh, to the municipal authority? Do I have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, I guess you can continue, Luke. Um, yeah. Sorry, I've had the camera pointing off into the distance for a while now. I think I better actually have it point so the folks at home can actually see who's talking. All right. Um, so this is a um, kind of an unexpected, um, uh, I, w I won't call it a windfall, but it is a pleasant surprise. Um, the, 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 Regulations re regarding the disposal of personal property owned by the township um, specify that we are to advertise in a, a paper of local distribution anytime we reasonably expect an item that we're selling will cost more than $2,000. Um, 
I was thinking this would be worth a couple hundred bucks. I, I listed um, our used wide format printer scanner uh, on the uh, municipal auction site, Municipid. I'm pleased to report that it received 12 bids and that the winning, uh, the, the, the winning offer um, at the time the, the auction closed was $1,025 uh, $1, to Amelia Moreno of Patterson, New Jersey. So at uh, this time, I'd respectfully ask the board to authorize staff to sell the used wide format printer scanner, model number Lanier MPCW2200 to uh, uh, Ms. Moreno. So moved, all in favor? Aye. 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 Sold, thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to let our library friends know uh, we're getting ready to go into resolutions and ordinances and you're welcome to stay here but I totally understand if you don't want to sit through this uh, you're welcome to leave at your leisure um, okay I, if you will, uh, I will take leave absolutely I understand uh, you know this business better than anybody uh, especially when there's a solicitor sitting there. <laughs> uh, but if, if you any of you have any No, uh, thank you. We're here to make the library better for your community, and uh, it is an important part of our community. It's the old help that we can get. So Couldn't we agree more. Your time and have a fun evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to hop into some resolutions, um, and I guess I'll turn this over to Tom. Right. First one, item uh, 7A is a resolution conditionally approving the final subdivision plan for 170 Crawford Road. I will read the resolution for purposes of the public record. Whereas on February 11, 2022, Greg Wagman filed with the township an application for preliminary final land development approval and plans, studies, and documents in support thereof for a property located 170 Crawford Road, identified as Chester County tax parcel number. 30-3-21 and whereas the application proposed to subdivide the property into two lots in accordance with the plan of subdivision for 170 Crawford Road prepared by Edward B. Walsh and Associates dated October 15, 2020 last revised May 18, 2022 whereas after subdivision lot 1 will contain 10.729 gross acres and lot 2 will contain 3.123 gross acres and whereas proposed lot two can be further developed with a proposed single family dwelling and whereas the property is located in the R1 residential zoning district and on lot water and sewer are proposed and whereas at its public meeting on May 19, 2022, the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors adopted a motion approving the application as a preliminary plan only subject to certain conditions that were outlined in resolution number eight of 2022 and in correspondence dated May 31, 2022 from Thomas S. D. Esquire to applicant. Whereas the board was also approved a waiver from sections 345-305 and 345-306 of the township stormwater ordinance to allow the use of a stormwater management facility that is designed with the managed release concept due to poor infiltration rates in the soils on the property. And whereas at the August 3rd, 2022 Planning Commission meeting, the Planning Commission recommended the board approve the final plan subject to applicant complying with any outstanding comments in the Township Engineer's Review Letter dated July 5th, 2022, and applicant coordinating with the Township Roadmaster to remove the large rocks and perform grading along the edge of Crawford Road opposite Newman Drive as required by condition two in the conditions of preliminary plan approval. And whereas applicant has requested the board to approve the application final plan, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of East Brandywine Township, Chester County, Pennsylvania as follows. The board conditionally approves the final subdivision plan titled 170 Crawford Road, prepared by Edward B. Walsh and Associates, Inc., dated October 15, 2020, last revised May 18, 2022, 
consisting of eight plan sheets and the studies and documents in support thereof subject to compliance with the following conditions. One, applicant shall revise the final plan to comply with all unresolved comments and recommendations set forth in correspondence of the Township Engineer Pannoni dated July 5th, 2022. App two, applicant shall coordinate with Matthew Van Lu, Township Roadmaster and conduct a pre-construction meeting to determine how to remove the large rocks along the edge of Crawford Road opposite Newman Drive and grade the road shoulder. Three, applicants shall pay a fee in lieu of providing active recreation areas in the amount of $2,000 in accordance with section 350-50 of the Township Code. Such fee shall be paid prior to the release of the plan for recording. Four, applicants shall pay a transportation impact fee in the amount of $3,000 $507.54 in accordance with Chapter 370 of the Township Code. Such fees shall be paid prior to issuance of a building permit for a dwelling on Lot 2. Five, applicants shall execute the Township form developers and financial security agreements and provide acceptable financial security for the Lot 2 improvements if determined necessary by the Township Engineer and Township Solicitor. Six, applicants shall obtain all necessary permits and approvals from outside agencies necessary to complete the lot two improvements. For example, a septic system permit from the Chester County Health Department and erosion and sedimentation control plan approval from the Chester County Conservation District. Prior, seven, prior to recording the final plan, applicants shall convey to the township by deed of dedication additional right-of-way for Crawford Road along the entire frontage of lots one and two extending from the center line of Crawford Road for 25 feet. Eight, prior to recording the final plan, applicants shall remove the top of the barn ruins column closest to Crawford Road and seal the top with mortar as approved by the Township Roadmaster. The deed of dedication shall require that the applicant shall require the applicant to be responsible for the maintenance and preservation of the barn ruins, which will be located in the right-of-way, and to indemnify and hold the township harmless from any liability resulting from personal injury or property damage due to the location of the barn ruins in the right-of-way. Nine, applicants shall execute and record with the final plan, the township standard stormwater operations and maintenance agreement for the stormwater facilities on lot two and if deemed required by the township an operations and maintenance agreement for the septic system on lot two. Ten applicants shall reimburse the township for all cost fees and expenses related to the review and approval of the final plan and all documents related thereto. Eleven all the foregoing conditions shall be complied with to the satisfaction of the Board of Supervisors and the Township Consultants by depiction on the final plan, notes on the final plan, and by documentation submitted with the final plan as applicable. Twelve, as requested, the applicant, as requested by the applicant, the Board grants a waiver from Township Code Sections 345-311B2 to utilize a 12-inch pipe in lieu of a 15 inch pipe for the outlet for the stormwater facility. Resolved, approved, and adopted this evening, if so moved. Uh, any questions, Carl? I'll make a motion we adopt a resolution 11 of 2022 conditionally approving the final subdivision plan for 170 Crawford Road as as uh, as read by our solicitor Mr. Estes Esquire and I'll second all in favor aye 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 um, Tom, you want me to read the next one it, it's a lot shorter so I think I can do it unless you want to well, the, the third one's really short, so yeah. you can bounce back to that. I'll, I'll just, just keep going. Okay, good, as long as you get your breath. The next is Resolution 12 of 2022. This is a resolution conditionally approving the preliminary final subdivision plan for the estate of Elizabeth Wagoner. 
Whereas the estate of Elizabeth Wagoner filed a preliminary final subdivision plan seeking to adjust the lot lines between two parcels of property located along the south side of Jeffress Road, west of Corner Catch Road, which are identified as Chester County tax parcel numbers 30-2-66.1 and 30-2-65, whereas parcel 66.1 is owned by the estate of Elizabeth F. Wagoner, contains 4.1 acres and is improved with a single family dwelling, whereas parcel 65 is owned by James and Betty Jane McElwee, contains 13.9 acres and is improved with two single family dwellings, a kennel, barn, stable, and other agricultural buildings, whereas both parcel 66.1 and parcel 65 are located in the R1 residential district and are served by on-lot sewer and on-lot water, whereas the application proposes to transfer 1.465 acres from parcel 66.1 to parcel 65, whereas if the lot line change is approved, lot one will contain 2.582 acres and lot two will contain 14.974 acres, whereas no further development or improvements are proposed as part of this application, whereas at a public meeting on August 3rd, 2022, the East Brandywine Township Planning Commission adopted a motion recommending that the Board of Supervisors approve the application and the preliminary final plan dated June 30th, 2022, subject to certain conditions. Whereas the applicant has requested the Board of Supervisors approval of the application and the preliminary final plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Supervisors of East Brandywine Township, Chester County, Pennsylvania, as follows. The Board approves the preliminary final plan titled the estate of Elizabeth Wagoner prepared by Inland Design 2022, subject to compliance with the following conditions. One, prior to release of the plan for recording, applicants shall obtain written confirmation from the Chester County Health Department that proposed lot one of the plan has an acceptable location for a replacement septic drain field. Two, applicants shall reimburse the township for all costs fees and expenses related to the review and approval of the preliminary final plan and all documents related thereto. The cost, fees, and expenses shall be paid in full prior to recording the preliminary final plan. Resolved, approved, and adopted. Thank you. Okay, and any questions on that? Carl? No. Jason? I'll make a motion resolution we accept resolution number 12 of 2022 conditionally approving the preliminary and final subdivision plan for the estate of Elizabeth Wagoner as read by our solicitor Mr. Tom Estes Esquire I'll second all in favor I'll second I'm sorry all in favor aye aye all right Tom you're on a roll buddy I did not prepare a resolution for this one. Yeah, actually, uh, I, I can take the point on this one if you don't mind. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, this is going to seem very redundant because at a prior meeting, uh, we, we uh, the, the board voted to um, appoint uh, uh, Becky Corbin to the zoning hearing board. Um, uh, 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 I, I, let me, I guess I'll take responsibility. Um, uh, uh, that is supposed to be an appointment that's done by resolution, not by a motion. So this is a, a reiteration of an action that the board um, did by motion in the form of a resolution. So he wants to dissolve the motion and then... No, you can just uh, <coughs> consider the resolution at this meeting. So move. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, I, I don't I don't feel it necessary to read in but I will summarize resolution 13 of 2022 it appoints uh, Rebecca Corbin to fill the uh, vacancy on the zoning hearing board um, the term that she would be appointed at would be as an alternate member and the term expires on December 31st 2024 understood and since this was already approved Carl I am assuming you have no issues with that all right uh, Jason, do you want to go ahead and make a motion on that? 
I make a motion we adopt resolution 13 of 2022, appointing uh, Rebecca Corbin to the zoning hearing board as an alternative member. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, may I? You, you may. <laughs> Next, we have uh, a hearing and potential adoption of Ordinance 2 of 2022, which is an ordinance which will have the effect of amending the township zoning ordinance to increase the maximum pervious coverage limitations permitted in the R1, R1 cluster, R2, R2 cluster, and R3 zoning districts. I know the board has discussed this on previous occasions. Uh, I have three exhibits to make part of the record. Exhibit B1 is a proof of publication in the daily local news of notice of this hearing on August 1st and August 8th of this year. B2 is an email dated July 13th, 2022, sending the proposed ordinance to the daily local news and the Chester County Law Library for filing for purposes of public inspection. And B3 is a letter from the Chester County Planning Commission, which is their review of the proposed ordinance as required by the Municipalities Planning Code. So the purpose is to ask if there's any public comment on the ordinance, and if not, the board can entertain a motion to adopt ordinance number two of 2022. And I see we have three guests here. Does anybody have any input or uh, questions regarding said ordinance? Seeing none. Um, Do they need a motion to enact? Yeah, I was going to say, Carl, you, you, good, you uh, have any questions before we make a motion? Uh, no, I do not. I don't. Okay. I'll make a motion that we enact Ordinance 2 of 2022 in order to the Township of East Bramwine, amending the East Bramwine Township Code, Chapter 399, titled Zoning, and known as the East Bramwine Township Zoning Ordinance of 1989. I'll second it. By increasing the maximum impervious coverage limitations in their R1, R1 cluster, R2, R2 cluster, and R3 zoning districts. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next, we have Ordinance 3 of 2022, and this type of ordinance does not require a hearing, but it does have to be enacted at a public meeting. I think the lieutenant might be able to give you more information about this. I, I did provide a memo to the chief, which I hope you saw, which tried to explain the background of this. But this is an ordinance uh, to authorize the execution of an intergovernmental cooperation agreement for the purpose of joining with other municipalities as a member of the Chester County Emergency Response Commission. And again, I have two exhibits. One is the proof of publication of the public notice in the Daily Local on August 3rd, 2022, and B2, an email to the Law Library and the Daily Local News providing the ordinance for public inspection. Yes, this, this resolution will allow us to continue taking part in multi-agency groups like our SWAT team, our SCAT team for serious accident call-outs and things like that. Yeah, and we've, we've been briefed on this, so I'm well aware of this. Uh, Carl, any questions? No, I do not. Thank you. I'll make a motion we enact Ordinance 3 of 2022, authorizing execution of an intergovernmental cooperation agreement for the purpose of joining with other municipalities as a member of the Chester County Emergency Response Commission. All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think I'm finished. <laughs> okay. Um, public comment on non-agenda items. Seeing none, uh, notice uh, the board did meet in executive session, I believe, at the end of the conclusion of, was that the last night meeting or I, I'm all confabulated here 
I think we announced our intent to go in executive session at the conclusion of the meeting, and so yeah. there is no further announcement to make. I, I just wanted to cover bases if I was wrong on that, but okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion we adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.